Hi, I'm Akram. Welcome to another medical episode here and today we're going to talk about pyloneal sinus or pyloneal sinus disease. The reason is because we've been operating today in pyloneal sinuses about four or five patients we had in our theatre list and I thought uh, this is a good opportunity for me to share my experience with all of you because this infection or this disease can be prevented if you take precautions and if you've been aware of it. And in this program, we're going to talk mostly about the condition, what it is, and what kind of treatment modalities you got, and how you can prevent it. Let's talk about pyloneal sinus. It's a small hole or tunnel in the skin. So any part of your body, generally, but there's some special places, uh, the condition can occur more. It may fill with fluid or pus, causing the formation of cyst or abscess. Generally, it occurs in the cleft at the top of the buttock, so in this area. But it can also occur in different parts of your body where hair can get friction by nature. For example, you accept around your groin as well if there is friction. <coughs> or by your profession. And that is going to be the question and I will leave the question to the end. I'm going to ask uh, what professions get this pyloneal abscess formation and where it forms. A pyloneal cyst usually contains hair, dirt and debris. It can cause severe pain and can often become infected. If it becomes infected, it may ooze pus and blood and have a fuel odor. A PNS is a condition that mostly affects men and is also common in young adults. It's also more common in people who sit a lot like cab drivers, lorry drivers. What are the causes of pyloneal sinus disease? The exact cause of this condition is not known, but its cause is believed to be a combination of changing hormones because it occurs after puberty, hair growth, and a friction from clothes or from spending a long time sitting. Activities that cause friction like sitting can force the hair growing in the area to burrow back under the skin. So basically the hair comes out and it goes back inside. The body considers the hair as a foreign and launches an immune response against it, similar to how it would react when dealing with a splinter. This immune response forms the cyst around the hair. Sometimes a person may have multiple sinuses that connect under the skin. Identifying a pyloneal sinus and recognizing signs of infection, you may not have any noticeable symptoms at first. A small dimple like a depression on the surface of your skin. However, once the depression becomes infected, it will quickly develop into a cyst a closed sac filled with fluid or an abscess, a swollen and inflamed tissue where pus collects. The signs of an infection include pain when sitting or standing, swelling of the cyst, redden, sore skin around the area, pus or blood draining from the abscess causing a fuel odor, hair protruding from the lesion, formation of more than one sinus tract or holes in the skin. You may also experience a low-grade fever, but this is much less common. How are pyloneal sinuses treated? Conservative treatment. If your case is diagnosed earlier on, you aren't experiencing severe pain and there is no signs of inflammation, it's likely that you will be prescribed a broad-spectrum antibiotic. A broad-spectrum antibiotic is an antibiotic that treats a wide range of bacteria. It's important to realize that this won't heal the sinus or tract, but it will give you relief from the infection and discomfort. You will be recommended that you get a follow-up exam, regularly remove your hair or shave the site, and pay particular attention to hygiene. The second modality is lancing. This procedure alleviates symptoms from an abscess or collection of pus inside the sinus. Before this procedure, your doctor will give you a local anesthetic injection. They will then use a scalpel to open the abscess. They will clean away any hair, blood and pus from inside the abscess. Your doctor will pack the wound 
with sterile dressing and allow it to heal from the inside out. The wound usually heals within four weeks and many people don't require any further treatment. The next modality of the treatment is phenol injection. For this type of treatment, your doctor again will give you a local anesthetic injection. They will then inject phenol, a chemical compound used as an antiseptic, into the cyst. This procedure may need to be repeated several times. Eventually, this treatment will cause the lesion to harden and close. This treatment has a very high recurrence rate. Therefore, doctors turn to surgery as the treatment of choice in some cases. So this is what we are doing today, surgery. If you have a recurring pyelonidal sinus or if you have more than one sinus or tract, your doctor will recommend a surgical procedure. You will be given a local anesthetic injection or general anesthetic depending on the size and the condition of the cyst. Then the surgeon will open the lesion removing all of the pus and debris. Once this procedure is complete, the surgeon will stitch the wound closed. After surgery, your doctor will explain how to change the dressing and will recommend shaving the site to prevent hair from growing into the wound. What is the outlook for pantral sinus disease? Depending on the severity of the disorder and the type of treatment, PNS will usually clear up within four to 10 weeks. What complications are associated with pyelonidal sinus disease? There are a number of complications that may arise from PNS. These include wound infection and the recurrence of the PNS even after surgery. Signs that the wound is infected include severe pain, inflamed, swollen skin, a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius or higher, blood and pus seeping from the wound site, a full order coming from the wound. How can I prevent pyelonidal sinus disease? You can prevent recurrence of PNS by washing the area on a daily basis with mild soap, making sure all soap is removed, keeping the area completely dry and avoid sitting for long periods. And uh, in certain religions, especially I know uh, Muslim religions, they require all people to shave their axilla and the pubic hair every two weeks. And uh, in these societies, pyelonidal sinus or pyelonidal abscess are very rare. So I'm not sure it's, it's up to you guys. If you want to follow that hygiene, that's also a possibility you could do. Anyway, we go back to the questions, uh, what I've uh, promised you guys. If you can write down in the comment section thank you very much for watching this program i want your input into the program and please advise me what else to do or am i doing right or wrong but well, anything is welcome thank you very much look after yourselves